the dead walk among us. It was we who put them back on their feet. Today on the Terrible Warriors, we meet the makers of Necrobiotic. Necrobiotic is currently in Kickstarter. There's still a week to go. There's a link there in the show notes, and you can go to pennyforatale.com to get a link to their Kickstarter page right now. Necrobiotic is a macabre setting set in the not-so-distant future when there's not many people in the world left alive, but we've got plenty of corpses lying around, so we better bring them back and put them to work. Now our fields are being tilled by the cybernetic automaton corpses of our loved ones. And yet, somehow, this is a game that is beautiful in its macabre, romantic in its setting. To navigate these conflicting ideas and images I have as I explore Necrobiotic, I connect with Mitch Wallace, co-founder of Penny for a Tail and one of the leads on Necrobiotic. But this isn't Meet Necrobiotic, it's Meet the Makers. So when I sit down and I get to meet with the people that make the games we enjoy to play, I always need to know what got you started in this in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> it, it actually, so I, I played, I was invited to play D&D uh, during my grad school uh, time at University of Maryland. Um, and I thought it was okay. It was definitely something I enjoyed, but I didn't really get to the buffet of TTRPGs uh, until after, or really role-playing. Uh, I watched the movie, horror movie called Wild Hunt, uh, which is about a group of LARPers going out to the woods. I saw and the trailer for that. Horrible, that intense. yeah. It, it's super intense. And after seeing that, I was like, oh, heck yeah. And so I found the nearest LARP. It won you and over. I, yeah, that was it. I was like, yes. Uh, and I, I showed up in full gear. I had I had spent money for it and everything. I was a, I was a kid with like, uh, uh, disposable income because I didn't really have anything else to spend it on. Uh, so I just spent it on LARP and I, I showed up and everything and I, I love the hell out of LARPing and I, I did the whole thing uh, back in North Carolina. Um, and that kind of, that was the real thing that got me into role playing and, and really like table topping. That was the gateway drug uh, so to speak. And eventually went on to like parlor LARPing with Vampire and I was playing D&D and Pathfinder. Um, but then it was the first year of PAX Unplugged that I got into the indie TTRPG scene. And I saw uh, of Dreams and Magic as well as the Genesis there. And I fell in love with it, purchased those books. And I was like, I need to play these and I need to play more, uh, which eventually led me to like City of Mist and uh, Cult and all sorts of other TTRPGs. And now it's like this amazing buffet that I get to be a part of every day as I continue to eat and, and chew upon the amazing creative things that everyone's producing. So yeah, that's kind of the origin story of that. So that brings you to today. And there's one week left in the necrobiotic Kickstarter. So what better time to introduce us to it in the first place? Uh, tell me about necrobiotic. What is this game that you are a part of? Yeah, Necrobiotic is a dystopian, a melancholy TTRPG uh, set in the year 2100 where humanity has pittered out uh, and is now behind the walls of Florence and only is able to sustain itself by the reliance of uh, or upon the dead. So the reanimated corpses of society uh, using thermodynamics and advanced science as a do the things that we uh, aren't numerous enough to do, such as clean the streets and farm and watch yeah. our little ones. You say dystopia, but it does sound like a Dr. Frankenstein utopia. This was yeah, everything yeah, he wanted uh, when he created life. Yeah, yeah it's kind of like that uh, that Bioshock uh, introduction, uh, talking about science and, and what you can do with it and such. Like it, it's uh, it's definitely a, a science paradise. And what is life like for the living? Uh, now that the dead are looking after all of the menial labor <laughs> around yeah. them. 
<laughs> it's it's kind of this very like melancholy almost like uh we happy few uh if you ever played that video game just this uh society where you know we don't know what the future is uh creativity and the arts have just started to come back because the they were kind of tossed aside as an unnecessary thing for survival um sounds like a little of like children of man where yeah there's just no color in the world everyone is just you know getting by one day just going to work waiting it out and this is all just going to be over soon yeah that that's definitely it like every day is just like why do we you have to especially as a player character is kind of decide why you persist and and what's what's for what's the future look like for you and what what are you aiming for um and the dead have just become such a part of society that even uh, the way we get about different places in Florence, you would like ride upon a, uh, a construct like ox or a construct horse uh, kind of pooling everyone around. Uh, and you see constructs on a day-to-day basis, empty streets because Florence doesn't have the population it used to. Uh, so Made me wonder d- now does necrobiotic dip its toe into that, like Detroit become human territory? Like how aware are these biotics are yeah they they you die and then you're brought back to work forever um do they have awareness do they know what's being done to them or are they just mindless automatons and the the body being used is just a shell yeah so um it kind of goes into how we present information in the book, which is through an interview between two individuals. Uh, and so the the narrative is supposed to be unreliable. Uh, and so from their perspective, they are uh, just, just they're like Roombas, right? You just yeah. you just program and they go on their way. There's no no more quandary to it. But they are um, able to like d- the reason you're using this and not just automatons is they need to be able to make choices as they're working. Right. Yeah. Like they, they're, they're kind of like a uh, advanced AI that we would have today. Like their, their ability to kind of perform complex functions is, is actually uh, pretty impressive and they can even like raise a child uh, so to speak. Yeah, It's almost like they have um, some kind of brain. Exactly, right? Like they're like able to something, something think there. And they have some form of awareness. <laughs> and, and that's kind of the uh some of the stories that we dive into is like Oh, so how... that's left somewhat unanswered when you start the game of like you're just taking it for granted the don't worry about it. Yeah, <laughs> don't, yeah don't, don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> don't don't look too Because too there's there's more of them now it. than there are of the living. What's gonna yeah. happen when they're like, no, actually we want a nine to five work week and we need to take our weekends off and I'm tired and Yeah, like what is it? They start unionizing and everything, like it's, it's gonna be a whole thing. Uh and I, I remember one actual play starts out that I was doing where one of the a co- uh, a coffee construct uh with their chest cavity kind of uh pulled out and replaced with like a, a heating uh, kettle for the, the like, carafa coffee um, starts crying in the middle of like this cafe and people start looking at it. And they're like, Holy crap. Like, what does that mean? <laughs> like, that's, Oh no, yeah, that's not supposed to happen. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to give you names. Uh, the, so, <laughs> so yeah. So Detroit human, but with zombie cyborgs. Exactly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> um, and, and, and tell me a bit about Necrobiotic, the gameplay, because it does sound really interesting. This isn't uh, a dice roller. Uh, you have some really interesting um, ideas of how we're going to play this game. Yeah, definitely. So, you, like, you know, the, the Kickstarter, we're, uh, we're doing just a deck of cards. So every, every player has uh, a deck of cards uh, made from a, a standard uh, poker deck. Um, and this reflects your character and stuff like that, uh, built by, uh, as a basis, your attributes, which are divided up into like flesh, steam, gear, uh, and, uh, steel. Uh, so different areas of focus for your character, like, you know, social, physical, mental, and then kind of your organizational or, or who you're associated with. Um, so this forms the basis of your character deck. Uh, and then throughout play, you usually draw up with a, a breath, as we call it, uh, a hand of six that you get to look at. Um, so they, they kind of are 
it, it's like spoons whenever you wake up and you're like you look at your 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 hand that you have and you're like you know what today is not a day that I will be talking to people I just don't have it in me uh, to be, to be successful and, and polite and stuff like that. Yeah. You gotta um, wait until your next breath. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And that's kind of how, how play works. Um, uh, if, if you're trained in it, you play two cards. If you're not, you're playing one card and you're either a success is, um, if the action matches the suit that you're playing. So if you're doing like, uh, persuasion or something like that, that'd be flesh, uh, or you're trying to get a combination of eight. Um, and I think I read successful. on your Kickstarter page that character creation itself can be done through a card draw. Yeah, yeah. Like the whole character creation uh, is everything is card. So as you're creating your your character and putting the stats in and everything, you just take the cards out of your uh, the bigger deck and you're you're creating your own custom deck that you can then carry around uh, with wherever you go. And that's like your character sheet uh, in a way. How has so, it been like watching people play this and, and, and learn it? Because it does sound like a really novel way of, of playing an RPG. Like it's changing these things that we're so used to. Uh, even car, even diceless games don't go so mm-hmm. hard into the card draw side of it. So what has it been like seeing people get to actually, like, is there yeah. a moment where the light switch goes on? They go, oh, yeah, there's, uh, th- there's two aspects that I really enjoy. And one of them is, um, uh, when, and, and even myself, I was, I was, I had the opportunity to play the game and someone else was running it, uh, just on, uh, TPK. Uh, and they kept saying like, okay, uh, go ahead and roll your cards or, or go ahead and roll, uh, which is just kind of standard for like, do whatever, uh, comes next, uh, which was just funny because we kept drinking after every time. Yeah. We're just so uh, used they, to they the, the jargon. It's, yeah, it's like, hard to it's hard no to matter what. shrug that off. Yeah. <laughs> and and another aspect was um watching people get it has been really interesting to see because once that first um that first kind of consequences are dealt with and you see someone playing a card, like everyone starts looking at their hand mm-hmm. like, okay, this how how should I start planning on what what I should use from here on out and like, uh, how should I plan my day and then what, what will I be doing for the rest of it? Like, it was very interesting seeing people as that like light clicked. Oh uh, yeah. Well, we got zombie world. No, we got zombie and... world. I was just moving it. I had it off to the yeah. side. And I was, uh, yeah. You keep talking about the card draw game. And I was thinking about zombie world. Cause I think when we first met, uh, I was volunteering at Gen Con 2019 at the Magpie booth and I was showing oh. off Zombie World. And I, I, I was invited down by Kate Bullock to help work at their booth that weekend, which was really, really fun. It was my first time at Gen Con and I just went right into the deep yeah. end. And, <laughs> uh, and, and people coming around and being like, oh, it's a card game. And I'm going, no, it's not a card game. It's an RPG. It's using cards just instead yeah. of dice, instead of uh, a, like pencil, paper, character sheet, we're going to do three cards instead and use a whiteboard because your characters are... T- so it was really fun to play a Powered by Apocalypse game that was primarily also a card game. And, and yeah. I really have like keyed in now to like card games. Uh, we I just interviewed a few weeks ago uh, the folks at Wedding Games with Never Going Home, which uses Ooh. cards a lot in their game as well. Yeah to track their humanity. And this is a, a, a mechanic that I think we're, we're getting attracted to because we're just so sick of how many different ways to do dice. There's just, there's just only so many different probabilities exactly. out there. And so there's more and more games that are dipping into trying out, you know, tokens. Like, uh, I think it's, um, what's it? Uh, Undying uses a lot of tokens instead. There's no dice. Oh, you're yeah, just, yeah. You're just trading the blood the tokens. To and, uh, and, and I haven't played Undying yet, but I read it and go like, oh, this is going to be good one day. And, yeah. uh, and, and now this with, with, with drawing cards, I just, uh, you know, this is, this is what, this is what I love about indie games is, is a chance to like throw something out there and experiment and put it into the laboratory in a way that would be too risky for the big ones, uh, oh, uh, where yeah. they wouldn't, they wouldn't even bother. Uh, you, you, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Kind of a mentality. Uh, but there's nothing to break because you haven't built it yet. So you get to try something completely different. How yeah, did- and like I, I, I love cards, and I, I think one of my favorite aspects is that like cards can be, uh, in my opinion, a better representation of, of, uh, I guess, customization and, and what you want it to be. Just because like the art in, in graphic design for cards is so diverse, right? It's, it can be like 
your favorite artists. Uh, you can you can make custom cards. Like it's everything's in your wheelhouse, and you can do so much with them. So, how did Necrobiotic come to settle on the cards? So how did that conversation go? Because I'm sure you did. Did the mechanic come first, or did the setting come first? What what was what were those conversations like? Yeah. So the the setting came first. It's actually based on the novels uh, called El Ingrangio by uh, Valerio uh, Amade. Um, who is an Italian uh, novelist. And there's about, I think, six or five books in the series. Cool. So it's it's done and over. And so, like, there's a subset of people in Italy who know how they, they, this So that's story... why it's set in Florence. I thought that was such yeah. a strange, because you're just all in Baltimore. And, 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 yeah. and then it's in Florence. Well, that's kind of cool. Like, there, I, there's not a lot of games that are set in Florence that aren't dealing with the Medicis in Assassin's Creed. And, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and here it was like, that's kind of cool. But I guess, you know, it was this idea of like automatons and Renaissance. And like, I kind of, uh, Da Vinci was from Florence. And so, like, or uh, operated out, he was from, he was from Vinci. But he, yeah. but but he got, he worked in Florence. But this idea of like I, I kind of I I got w- why that worked, but it was such a interesting. And now you just made sense. There's gonna be a lot of people like me who are gonna be learning about these books, yeah, through your game. You know that. Oh, and that's kind of like uh, my hope is to one day um, have them translated so that people can explore the world and and and, and such. But. Hopefully not before we're done with our uh, TTRPG yeah, progress yeah, yeah. for the whole thing because uh, the the series has began and it ended. Cool. Uh, and so uh, for this TTRPG, how old are those books? Where are they uh, recent or are they are pretty they like- recent? I, I think they started publishing about like seven years ago. Oh, okay, or so six this years century. Ago. So they weren't like from yeah. the nineties or the eighties. Cool. Yeah, and and like the the. Uh, the author is is definitely involved in the whole process, uh, as well as uh, Andrea uh, Marmugi. Uh, and those two were kind of the the birth of the system. Uh, and then Necrobiotic is a kind of a 2.0 version of the, the system and the setting, uh, just kind of updated and, and brought to light, uh, as well as kind of refined and stuff like that. So that's so cool. It, I know I'm, I'm like so excited to how did to, that partnership happen who was the fan of the book how did you learn about it? if it's not even been translated to English like how did this even how did how did this happen this oh is oh my god it sounds it like was, two ships in the night but yeah it, it was it was two ships in the night um my friend went to Italy and uh Andrea and uh, Valerio are both uh specifically Andrea own uh one of the oldest uh game shops in uh italy um and it's called like strategima uh and my friend went there and you know he knows i love indie ttrpg so he grabbed uh, a copy of like their their first printing of uh ellen drenaggio so this is the the ttrpg I that recognize they there's developed. there's their the eye being pulled out yeah, that is yeah, in all yeah. of your other artwork <laughs> that's so cool yeah. Uh, so this was kind of the basis and he bought me this book um, and brought it back and he was like, you should translate this and play it. And I was like, that sounds awesome. Uh, instead of translating it, I, I talked to the creator and I was like, can you run this for me? And he, he did. And that actual, that actual play is somewhere on the internet still. Um, and I fell in love with the game and I was like, look, I, I want to bring this to the English audience. I want to refine it. I want to make it like as sexy as possible um and i i want to like i want because i want to play with other people selfishly i that's the whole reason for this kickstarter yeah. so i can have other people to play with um but yeah that's how it kind of happened like it was just this happenstance of my friend going over overseas and grabbing this book so rewinding again how then so 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 that so the setting obviously came first and this all happened mm-hmm. what then uh brought your conversation to you know what we should do in t- a card game we it should be it should be a standard deck of cards, even tarot cards if you want to use them. How did how did that come about? Because again, yeah. that doesn't that it doesn't sound like the jump to conclusion, Matt. <laughs> we don't yeah, use no. to. That's something that's <laughs> that, off the that's off the beaten path. Yeah, well, that's fair. It was uh it was actually Andrea and Valerio uh who were who were talking and they were they were kind of birthing this system for another TTRPG uh, called I think Vitro, 
um, and using the card system as a basis. Uh, and at that time, we were calling it like gear, uh, the gear system. And we don't know if we're going to continue following it. That that might be a whole thing. But um, as it kind of developed and stuff, we just like it fits the setting so well. Uh, to have that instead of a, a dice pool or, or dice kind of uh, shifting what could be success, what could be possible and stuff like that, instead of uh, placing the decision making and the kind of the randomness on the conversation between the player and the GM mm-hmm. um, so that both have a stake on what's important and what's valuable to their character um and then the GM kind doesn't of, have a whole lot of say really yeah, what's the, gonna happen here they're uh, an arbitrator not so much someone who is proposing the way that the players with the cards are going to have yeah exactly i mean the, the gm doesn't have anything like he doesn't it's, roll it's a against very the different players. power balance compared to some mm-hmm. other games yeah they they just kind of like you know if they want to do something they say these are the potential consequences which do you want to eliminate based on your successes? And you get to choose which you want to eliminate. You can, while you're talking to someone, you could get the information, but leave a bad taste in their mouth. And like, just uh, long-term, like you're, you're hurting that relationship. Or if that relationship is more important to you than the information, you can kind of through that conversation, build that relationship and be like, you know what? The information's not that important to me right now. Maybe I'll try again and like next day or, or a week or two and that. So it allows kind of that nuanced conversation between you as a player and the GM about how these scenarios play out. What's the feedback been like now where we're, you're into the final week of your Kickstarter. And so there's still time for you to get in there and help you. You've, you've, it, the, it's been backed. It's going to happen. You're now smashing yep. through those stretch goals as fast <laughs> as you can go. So what has the the first three weeks and the, the reaction from the community, what's it been like getting Necrobiotic out into, not into the wild yet, because we're in the Kickstarter, but you know what I mean? Like yeah. out into the consciousness of people around. Oh man, like how I've been feeling. Cause like, it, it was like- You feel like a Necrobiotic yourself now. Cause you probably haven't slept. You feel like a reanimated corpse put to work in the fields. Oh yeah. Like the, the, the night before we launched, um, I had been working all the whole day on perfecting the the Kickstarter, making sure everything was perfect. And then at 1 a.m., I got with the video guy uh, because he had like a lot of other work to do. And we were like, okay, this morning, we are going to knock out this video together, go step by step and make this something beautiful. So we went from 1 a.m. to to 5 a.m. working on this. It's it's a beautiful video. There's animation. There's some live action work. There's a voiceover. There's it's it's more than just a slideshow of concept art (laughs) with with some mock shots of what the book might look like. Uh, There's there's, it's a movie trailer. It's really cool. (laughs) And that's what we wanted because like the Genesis Rebirth uh, is kind of a a huge influence in terms of presentation as well as like trailer work. If I if I could get to their level, that would that would be amazing. Um, But maybe one day. Uh, And also Symbarum had a really great trailer. Like uh, those are games that I've watched their trailer again and again. And those are Um, both games that are like art forward those mm-hmm. the artwork is what's um selling the game in most places and oh yeah and, and right. like they're they're really the the the, the imagery that they have and the same thing i think it was the same artist who ended up working on the alien rpg and they're working on the one ring like it's oh, it's yeah. good it's really nice it's really like and i i was always a fan of beautiful ttrpgs those big watercolors and yeah like i i love them so much like free league always does a great job with it um trying to I mean to genesis as well um trying to think lexicultum like riot minds also does a really good job i mean you uh, mentioned cult was that the same as cult divinity lost yeah, yeah yeah the artwork in that uh that's why i bought that book i uh, oh, when i was at jed con and was gorgeous. sitting there at the modifius booth i was like i don't have any money left but take the rest this is what this is gonna be my <laughs> supper but you're taking the money now because i need this book in my in my in my bag no, I, I understand that that feel. I remember at Gen Con taking a break and like my wife was like, okay, you either eat or you get books. Like one of those two things. Guess I'm going to starve. Like, that's like, I know. I was like, that's just because I need those books. I and, mean, and, and, and as a Canadian going down to the US, like that McDonald's value menu is very affordable. That's, 
You're and, oh, no, that, you don't understand. Eggs up here are like seven dollars for a dozen eggs. Holy eggs, hell. Yeah, they're so expensive, or like maybe closer to five dollars. But it's yeah. like five dollars for eggs. And I was down there going shopping, like a dollar for a dozen eggs? What <laughs> is this? So Oh yeah. man, yeah, that, that that's perfect. Yeah, I during that Gen Con, I remember going to the uh the blood, like the mobile blood bank and just being like, you know, if I give you blood, <laughs> I get cookies and juice. We take care of each other, right? What I do when Perfect. I go to the conventions like that is I, I try not to eat out because it's so expensive and I want to spend all my mm-hmm. money on the trade show floor. Um, I get a, a loaf of bread and then mm-hmm. I get a bunch of cold cuts uh, or, or like spreads or mayonnaise or whatever. And then I make a bunch of sandwiches and then I just stack them right back into the same loaf of bread bag. And I that's a good and that's, idea. And there, there's like my, there's my seven sandwiches for the weekend. They're all in one bag. I don't even have to get baggies for it. And then every morning, you know, uh, then the hotel room, the Airbnb or wherever I'm staying at, I can just open up the fridge, grab the sandwich <laughs> and off I go. And, oh. and that gets me to the evening. And then I'll have like a plan for, for something else that I've got. So you know, that is perfect. That, that's going to be my, my way to go about it next time. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, so 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 the Kickstarter has been going really well. You got your stretch goals coming. What are you hoping for? Uh, looking forward with Necrobiotic, where where is this going to go in seven days, six months, a year? What 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 uh, what are we buying into uh, when we when we back this game? What are we what are we looking forward to? Yeah. So in the next couple of days, I'm hoping to because we're actually going to be restructuring restructuring the stretch goals uh, because I really want those stretch goals. Uh, as a as a personal like I was like I need them uh, and and having the ability of having like Matthew Dawkins right as well as uh, Petr Nalo who did fourth edition cult uh, do a short story within it and then like a lot of like Noir Enigma and and Draconis and stuff like that having their uh, creative interpretation of the the stuff within the the book like it sounds really cool. And I also like, we have the construct template uh, rules that we want to to write in and put into the book. Um, so that's kind of the next couple of days is, is smashing the rest of the stretch goal. So we can pack this, uh, this Kickstarter with us or the book with as much like awesomeness as, as possible. Okay. Well, um, we're at the half, we're at the half hour mark near in our conversation. So mm-hmm. whoever's listening to us has been listening to us this far. So they're, 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 they're on the fence. They haven't clicked back yet. They're, 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 they're listening in. They're keying into this. They're like, this is kind of cool based on some like obscure, at least over here, Italian yeah. macabre sci-fi dystopian universe uh, card based play. What what's the what's the pitch here? What what, what do you want to tell to them? Um, you know, because, you know, and I know whenever we pick up, especially indie games, whoever buys it's going to be the one who's going to run it. Yeah. <laughs> like oh, yeah. You're, 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 that's it. No one, no one else is going to want to run the game that you bought. Uh, and you then also have to take this game that you bought and you've got to pitch it to your gaming group and convince them to stop playing whatever they're comfortable with to try yeah. this new thing out. So what could you do to say to alleviate your, or, or get someone hyped for like, why should they put their game on a break to try this out? And, 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 and convince their, their group to get into it. What, what is it that, that you think is the, uh, you know, the hook, the spicy sauce that makes necrobiotic work? Yeah, I, I think the, the spiciness, the, um, the, the Szechuan sauce, uh, of, of sorts, the, the specialness of this game, um, is that it, it allows you to approach a TTRPG in such a, drastically different way that the narrative and the focus of storytelling uh, will shift along with it uh, because of the celebration of life with the, with the game and the setting and stuff like that, you know, you're, you're not trying to kill anyone and, and to do so is a huge taboo. So the way that you approach things are, are very different from uh, how you would normally approach something within a game, despite the darkness and, and, you know, macabre nature of the world. Um, it's also really, easy to pick up like i've had people who haven't heard of it and then i've got them to do an actual play in like 15 minutes like it's really smooth and easy to get in um but there's also like these wonderful beautiful stories that can be told one of my favorite aspects of like the dystopian and uh melancholy melancholy like setting is that because of the darkness like the light 
shines through in such a beautiful way. Uh, what moments that might be uh, lost in the minutia of a TTRPG because of the setting is kind of uh, uplifted in these moments within Necrobiotic. Um, one of my favorite moments was like, uh, or an actual plays was them just trying to reconnect a, um, a, a dead mother's uh, packages of letters that she'd been trying to send to her daughter for over a decade and trying to just deliver these letters to um, her, her daughter who she never met and only seen from afar and watching that moment happen and like, the like people were saying afterwards like it was such a profound and beautiful moment and those are kind of the experiences i live for concerning necrobiotic uh and i I, it's definitely like for people picking it up like go for those beautiful beautiful moments like you're going to be able to get into those really easy and you're just going to love it so much this is a game that's really focused about the characters stories their journeys how they're getting by in this world and not um a game that is going to challenge you with combat and Mm -hmm. and those like we're we're not we're not exploring sewer systems and finding hidden mysteries so much as as exploring each other yeah exactly i mean even in like a combat heavy uh scenario that we ran a a couple weeks ago the the main thing was like they were trying to recover old uh african-american art uh from the wilderness and bring it back to florence to kind of show the people and like there was a whole discussion like is art worthwhile to sacrifice a life in order to to bring back to humanity like Mm. how much is art is worth in in this world and just seeing the characters kind of explore that avenue and some people were like yes like i i know this artist and like i've heard about them and i it, it would mean so much for my friends my families my neighbors to see this uh back in florence um and and so watching that like through the whole combat and seeing their uh perspectives and focuses and values shift throughout it uh was really cool well like saving private ryan except for for a painting instead of a person exactly right was like how much are we willing to sacrifice for this relic of the past Mm -hmm. because it's not even just a debate on art because there's a debate about should we keep creating art Versus preserving and recovering this lost yeah. art from a world that doesn't exist anymore. Exactly. Yeah. Like it's, it's, it's definitely a, a very interesting. And I think one of my favorite parts is like a lot of the times there is no, like, I don't like, I, I me as a GM don't know the answer. I just kind of watch sure. the players figure it out on their own. What has something really surprised you uh, from these play groups that you didn't expect Necrobiotic to produce? Yeah, I, I I think like uh, the the players that I I've been around and such, there's been a lot more um, empathy than I was uh, originally uh, anticipating. Uh, especially like as I dive into other actual play groups that have probably only run like D and D and stuff like that, uh, seeing the um, the empathy for uh, like small np small npcs and stuff like that and and seeing kind of like um people's reactions to small aspects of the setting uh has always been really surprising uh and just seeing like what would what what is um what aspects of the setting kind of really um uh shines through and and which don't like you know it's been really interesting to kind of see that hmm and uh, I, I just, I got to ask, like this, this, you had this plan going, how, putting this game out in this year of all years, oh my this God. setting of all <laughs> settings that you even have in your description, the population began to decline in 2020 and it never recovered. Yeah. And, and like, yeah. like, that's a bit of like a, oh, I know that yeah. was written in 2019 or earlier and you're just having to like, we're just going for it now. You're just, yeah. hopefully this like history will just look back kindly on this, but it, 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 it it is a it is a bit of a sell to sell a dystopian game that it's not about an epidemic. You say it's not. We don't know why people yeah. just started dropping dead, but <laughs> you do have like you know the population <laughs> just d- dwindled until there was no one left except the corpses around us to serve as our labor. Um, I mean, come on, how that that's 
that has that must have been a time to I, I I know how these things work. They're planned so far in advance, and there's just only so much you can delay, delay until you have to just we gotta do this or it's never gonna happen. Um yeah. like how has that been for <laughs> for you and, and your team? Like <laughs> this has been a this that that's a I, 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 it was tough. I'm not playing dystopian games. I'm playing like Yakuza Like a Dragon. I'm playing like weird comedies and mm-hmm. uh, uh, colorful stuff and Pokemon Snap because I, I, I can't pick up The Last of Us 2. I just can't do it. It's tough. It's tough. Oh my God. It's Last of grim. Us 2. It's I too can't. grim. <laughs> it is. Oh man. Yeah. It, it was just kind of like, you know, we, we have to do it. And um, for us, it was. Um, and, and kind of in our, our heart of hearts, especially for me, uh, watching um, uh, America kind of move forward, like the, the longer the pandemic went on, the less impact the word plague and like X, 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 X number of deaths per day. This would have been a very hard game to kickstart last April. Yeah. And <laughs> the, was, we the all impact. Afraid. Yeah, the impact has just like dropped and it's kind of like goes along with that, you know, the the apathy of numbers as as it starts to become a, a norm uh, or at least, you know, society lets it become a norm um, that you see people just stop caring. Um, and so Necrobiotic, uh, the, the thing I really enjoy is that every life is very important like even the a heart the hardened criminal is like i don't want to kill someone because that's one more uh that's one more notch on the the belt of humanity and you know humanity doesn't have potentially could not have long left um and, and so i we, we kind of went forward because necrobiotic despite like the the past and the death and the the cod nature of it is really kind of a, a celebration of the existence that we have and the life that we have, like you explore, like, what does my life mean? What does this value mean? What do I do now that I don't have to roll? How do I now when I don't have to like work at some of these jobs on a day-to-day basis and, you know, I'm taken care of because wealth has just kind of been tossed to the side. Uh, It's not something that people really care about anymore. People are taken care of because humanity is so precious. Um, and, and so for, for us and especially running it, uh, we, we try to focus on those aspects because, you know, it, it kind of stands in contrast to how America has kind of viewed the pandemic and how it continues to view it, um, as yeah, it's become yeah. less of a tragedy and more of a, a normative aspect of society. It does sound like Necrobiotic is not as dark a game as it appears on the cover. That uh, as you open up the pages, it has it blossoms in a way with mm-hmm. it. It's macabre, but it is set in Florence, which already mm-hmm. creates these like kind of romantic notions and yeah. ideas of art and Renaissance and culture and history. Uh, but is also the site of quite a lot of uh, dark history moments and 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 challenges. And uh, mm-hmm. uh, it is it is a, a it is a, it was a very interesting place to set a game uh, in a setting like this. Uh, where yeah. where should we go to follow up with you and Necrobiotic, the Kickstarter, the company, like everything? Where should we be going? Yeah, Assume they're not so, going to read the show notes, even though they're all going to yeah. be in there. <laughs> yeah, if, if you're not reading it, uh, I would say the, the best place to stay up to date is my own uh, Twitter, which is Penny for a Tale. After that, you can go to our website, which is pennyforatale.com. Uh, and from there on, you'll have links to not only my Twitter, but to uh, all the others and the Kickstarter and new images, as well as uh, something that we're really excited about because I love Invisible Sun. Uh, uh, and I love the way that they presented secrets and stuff within their book. And that's something that we're going to be replicating within Necrobiotic is having these little threads that you can kind of follow through multimedia. Uh, and so our first one is on that website, which shows a um, a kind of recording of uh, the first person to start to figure out the construct and, and the science behind mm-hmm. it. Um, which is a very important plot point to uh, the whole meta of the game. So, 
is something to start off with. Yeah, yeah, it does sound like you've got you've got the you have like an arc ready here. You've got you got a story you want to tell, and it sounds like you have been itching to tell it for a very long time. Oh yeah, so. yeah, it's 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 tough. Like one of my favorite stretch goals that we just accomplished was the uh, Merchants of Venice. Um, which is the first people we get introduced to outside of Florence. Um, and we're going to tease a little bit of stuff concerning Venice uh, and, and what they're doing. But like that whole thing will be explored more thoroughly in another book. But mm-hmm. we, you get a taste of it in the core rule book. Well, speaking of a taste for it, as we as we wrap up uh, the final thought here, what is the what's the teaser, the, the, the this story that you want to tell? Where are we going to start? If we're getting ready to play our first game, what's what's that? What's the email that's sent out before that session zero that hooks everyone in? Uh, what are we prepared? What should we prepare ourselves for for the very first time we uh, we visit Necrobiotic? Ooh, so I, I would definitely say on the the website with that uh, voice recording, you have the the first recordings of um, the the creation of the construct. Uh, produced by the father of uh, Elizabeth Gori, who is kind of attributed to creating and finishing the construct in Florence and saving humanity there. Um, and kind of following those threads about where the constructs actually come from, how do they, uh, how are they created? Uh, because honestly, the architects themselves don't even know that final spark that created brings these things back to That's life they just at all. yeah they know the equations and stuff that go behind it they can replicate it over and over again but it's just there's that little bit of unknown science that they can't quantify uh but it, it happens in nothing like uh, trapping a soul inside a diode yeah like oh, it, it's 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 tough thing so you know uh, player this is how you like, get cults this is how you get people like uh, i'm thinking of altered carbon <laughs> where you get the uh the the the, the neo-catholic church or like we, we will never use the altered carbon we will never use the stacks oh. one cycle you only get one cycle if you get spun up even once you lose your soul um, yeah I mean, that's the Children of the River stretch goal is one of them went out to the wilderness and had a full conversation with a construct and brought back the words that the contract spoke and was like, we are doing something horrific here in Florence. Like it is, it is a a cry against And we're doing this to our loved ones. Yes, exactly. You're right. This is horrific. Uh, And and they start to become more of a political faction within Florence. And at that point, you're dependent on them. Yeah, like humanity this, this becomes needs an oil it. crisis where we have to cut ourselves off fossil fuel, except it's off our grandma who is now working in the mines. Mm-hmm. Oh, exactly, boy. and like farming, like most of the constructs are just farming, yeah. like, and that's food that people need in Florence. Yeah, uh, it, it becomes a whole like that. That's a good place for people to start. Is is that moral quandary of are we doing? Oh, I, this I love right? a good thought exercise. That's just good yeah. science fiction. I love that speculation or. You know, mm-hmm. just you and I talking, my mind keeps, as you can hear, I keep going like, oh, but what if, what if, what if? And it really sounds like this is a game that is encouraging that. And is there going to be an answer or is this an answer that play groups are going to discover? Because there's two games I've, I've, I've talked to recently. The first one was Nibiru, mm-hmm. where the, the mystery Ooh. of Nibiru is never revealed in the game. It will only be revealed in different times each time by the play group. Those mysteries of what that place is, is is figured out by the players. And then there's the mysteries in Simbarum, which will be revealed as yeah. expansions come out. There are questions that have answers and the players might be wrong in finding those answers. Or they might have the, the wrong theory, uh, but eventually the game itself is going to answer what Simbarum is. So where yeah. does Necrobiotic fall on that? spectrum are you planning to have answers to these questions or are you going to just leave it to just give us yeah. nightmares <laughs> so for us we will always be reliant upon our unreliable narratives in the way that we present the the book so from you always this... have plausible deniability exactly yeah. right there <laughs> will always back. <laughs> there will always be an out for us uh though there will be answers uh provided by like future supplements is as we 
push forward the meta as it continues to go forward and, and people get to experience like the future of Florence and, and what comes next. Uh, but once again, like these aren't reliable narratives and we encourage the, the GMs and the players to be like, well, maybe that's wrong. And I think this is actually the truth of it uh, and to go forward with it. Excellent. Uh, I'm excited to see what happens next with Necrobiotic. Thank you for the time you me spent too. with Thank me. You. Yeah, we, we, we'll, we'll, we'll get in touch again later as the game is out and, and in people's hands. And uh, uh, we'll hope, I mean, maybe we'll even get a chance to play it right now. We've got like our games on pause, uh, but uh, but there's always another year as we get into our next season. So uh thanks for reaching out you reached out to me this time and i was just i, I remembered our conversations I, I was seeing necrobiotic on, on on my social media feeds and i was just very excited that that you thought of us and so i uh, well, i hope we can course. share the word you've got uh at, depending on when i put it out you you have at least a week to to still Do get it. in on on the kickstarter so go check it out have a look at at those uh those perks and those goals and those tiers and at the very least, just look at uh, to see the artwork and everything and, and get excited about it because I I yeah, really do hope nothing but success uh, for this game as it Thank comes you out. So much. Releases. Yeah. And we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll play it at a Gen Con soon, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a big hearty thanks to Mitch Wallace for spending time with me and letting us get to meet one more maker in our series. If you want to know more about Necrobiotic, visit pennyforatale.com. There's also a link in our show notes directly to the Kickstarter page. There's still a few more days to go. You can get in on this and be part of a really cool indie game initiative. And if you'd like to meet more makers, we've got this ongoing series where we've been meeting for over a year now with different developers of some of the games we have played on the show and games we want to play on the show. It has been really cool to connect and get to talk with them and learn about not just the games that they've made, but why they made those games. And that entire playlist is available right there on the homepage at terriblewarriors.com. And I think we've even got a playlist on our YouTube page. Oh, did you know we're on YouTube? We're also on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and CastBox and basically anywhere you can get a podcast. In fact, if we are not available on the platform that you're listening to, get in touch with me right now and I'll make sure it's there. And while you're on those platforms, hey, do us a favor. Podcasts are really hard to share and get the word out. They don't go viral like a TikTok. And so I could really use your help by having you leave a review, any feedback, liking, following, whatever it is that that platform does to help you share those shows. Any little bit of engagement goes a long way in helping to bring the Terrible Warriors into the ear holes of someone new. And there's other ways to support this show. Patreon.com slash Terrible Warriors. I know it's been a little quiet this year because we haven't been in the actual play game mode, but we are getting ready. I have plans this summer to gear us up for our next season. We are going to return to playing games full time in the fall. That is my plan. That is my hope. And you can really make that a reality by signing up at any level at patreon.com slash terrible warriors. And if you want to go up a little level higher, we have the terribly important patron club tip club where you can participate in a private monthly game that I will run for you each month. Right now we're playing forbidden lands, but I'll run any game you want really. And if you want to hang out with us on discord, there's also a link to that at terriblewarriors.com. We're in there every day. And right now we're, we're talking about Stellaris, this not so new game that I am very much into now. <laughs> we'll be back next week with what I believe will be another session zero. And until that time, thank you for supporting this show and independent podcasts. Thank you for supporting independent publishers and the games like Necrobiotic and Mitch Wallace, who we just talked to. And thank you for making your tables open and welcoming and accessible. Until we meet again, roll dice at the table, be good to each other. <laughs> <laughs>